Hi there, Toy here, and it's time for my March wrap up and my April TBR. So I was a little late in the month of February, like way late, but you know, stuff happens. But at least I'm not too far behind when it comes to the month of March. So here's what's happening. I read six publications in the month of March and two of those were actually from my original 2018 uh, list of books to read. Um, right now I am 55% done with my overall reading challenge which means I'm 19 titles ahead of schedule. So I'm pretty much just going to be coasting through the rest of the year. So here's what I actually read in the month of March. I read Entombed in Glass. That is the Unfortunate Souls Chronicles number two. I actually received a uh, an event to uh, read a copy and arc of that so that I could participate in the blog tour and that was a lot of fun. Ended up giving that an overall rating of a four and I'm pretty sure there's going to be more to come in that series. It's again something from one of my favorite authors Stacey Rourke so I'm always looking forward to her stuff. Another thing that I read was Me and Mr. Boo. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Me and Mr. Bo. I don't know why I said that, but um, this is actually a middle grade um, novel written by Dan Nimack, and I had read another one of his stories called um, Has Anyone Seen My Brain? And I really enjoyed it, and so I've been trying to get more into middle grade, and he did a giveaway on Goodreads for this, and I won one of those. I ended up giving it an overall rating of a three. I thought it was a really good story, but not quite what I was expecting. And I'm not sure about some of the content in it. Not, not that any of it's bad. I just think for younger readers, some of it may not appeal. It gets kind of deep. So if you want to know more about that, please check out my re review. The next thing I read, uh, and this was on my original to-read list, was Bright Star, Night Star, an astronomy story. Now, this is a children's picture book. And I ended up giving it an overall star rating of a 3 because again it's not really what I expected I thought it was going to be I don't know different <laughs> uh, it, did, it ended up being kind of a book being kind of a book of poetry um, it wasn't very cohesive uh, it was very beautiful I liked what I read but again if you want to know more about it um, please check out my full review and um, the next thing that I read was again on my original list and this was The Bear Who Wouldn't Leave. This is a novella by J.H. Moncrief and um, she's an author that I've uh, met online. I've really started to get into some of her stuff. I read a dark fantasy that she wrote last year. I have a couple of more titles by her that I want to read and this one was a short read so I, I, I jumped, jumped into it. At first I didn't really like it but I ended up giving it an overall star rating of a four. So again, if you want to know more about that, please check out my full review. It, it explains my initial dislike to eventually giving it a four. Uh, let's see. The next thing that I read was another novella by one of my favorite authors, Chris Fay, and this was 30 Seconds. Now, I had seen this book before by Chris Fay, but I don't know. I just never thought about picking it up. And then she shot a video a while back um, where she was reading like a sample from it. And um, I was like, you know what? I need to check that out. So I did. I ended up giving it an overall star rating of five. It was a really good story and I understand she has a prequel out to it so I'll have to check that out as well. And then the last thing that I read was She Died in My Arms. This is the Children of the Clay book zero which basically means it's a prequel to the overall series I assume. I've seen kind of the book of clay books before but I've never really tried to get into them. I saw this one listed as a, a discounted download and where it's a, a prequel novella I thought it would be a short read and it would kind of let me know whether or not I wanted to read more in that series which I definitely do ended up giving it an overall star rating of four. So that is what I actually read in the month of March. So now let's talk about what I'm currently reading because it's April and I've already started reading some new stuff. My husband and I are actually reading a book together. Um, I found something that he would be interested in. <laughs> so we are reading the Tayo of Bill Murray, Real Life 
um, there's more to the title, but it's written by um, Gavin Edwards. And basically, it's it's a bunch of stories from Bill Murray's life that kind of go along with these principles of how he lives his life and how maybe you could possibly live your life. Um, if you don't know, the towel means like the way or the teachings of. So um, this guy is, it's a very humorous story, but a lot of it's, you know, um, based in reality. I mean, this is Bill Murray's life and he's using these life lessons to maybe show you some things to maybe make your life more enjoyable. So it's so far so good. We're, we read, we started reading it over a, a vacation that we recently took and we're going to keep reading a little bit here and there. We're spacing it out. We're not in a hurry to finish it, but hopefully we'll get it done before the end of April. I'm also currently reading Guns Above Airship Number One. Now, I actually started reading this book back in February. It's a book that I won through a giveaway last year, never got around to it. And honestly, there was so much going on in the month of February. This book spent a significant part of the month under my passenger <laughs> car seat because I dropped it there and forgot about it for a long time. So I picked it back up. It's slow rolling. I'm getting into it. It's a pretty good story so far. So that's what I'm currently reading. But for the rest of the month of April, what I have slated to read, what's on my TBR, is I want to read um, Sign of the Green Dragon by uh, Celie McKenzie. That's a middle grade novel. And actually, I did start that today. I, I think I opened it. I either started it today or yesterday as, as of me shooting this video. So I've already cracked that open. Uh, another thing that I want to read is a short story collection by um, Sarah... Seth Wharton and it's called Dread. It's a horror collection. I'm not a big horror reader but every now and then I do like to try something different so I'm gonna hopefully get into that and then sometime between the months of um, April and May I'll be reading Save the Cat, the last book on screenwriting you'll ever need. This is a nonfiction book. This is for my Insecure Writer Support Group book club and um, we'll be having the discussion, I believe, on May 23rd. So I have some time to get to that. So that is what I read in March, what I'm currently reading and hope to read in April. I do have two books that are kind of like waiting in the wings. If for some reason I can get through those books before the end of March, um, the next things I plan to read are Lakia by Sharon Von Orman and then uh, 50 Fabulous Tomatoes for Your Garden by Ruth Dejar. Ooh, I always mispronounce her name. I'll, I'll put it in the video so you can see how her name is pronounced. But it's a nonfiction book about tomatoes. And I don't know why, but I've really been getting into like um, this, this whole idea of, you know, where your food comes from and you're eating stuff. My husband and I started ordering food from a, a neighborhood farm service. So anyway, that's what I read in March. And that's what I plan to be reading in April. If any of this sounds interesting, let me know. If you want to recommend something, let me know. And that's all I have for now. Bye-bye.